We're looking at 14.1 on the AQA specification. It's the, one of the first lessons in the A2 syllabus following respiration and photosynthesis. And the first thing we're going to look at is what is a stimulus? Well, a stimulus is different from one organism to the other. Why? Because it's a change in your internal or external environment that you can detect. So clearly, we don't have all the same receptors as, uh, for instance, bats, which are another type of mammal. Um, and so a stimulus to them is different to a stimulus to us. So it's any detectable change in the internal or external environment um, that leads to a response. In other words, you must have receptors for it. What is a receptor? Well, a receptor, you'll learn more when you move into the... Uh, topic on the nervous system is a transducer it changes one type of energy into another type of energy so a receptor is specific so it doesn't matter how much you shout at your eyes they can't hear it doesn't matter how much light you shine on your ears they can't see they are specific to that particular change in the environment so we're looking at something called taxis now taxis is the plural taxis is the singular and it, that's where the word taxi comes from it's moving from one place to another the whole body moving from one place to another uh, why would an organism move from one place to another well all the taxis the kinesis and the tropism that we're going to talk about are all there to increase the organism's chance of survival so in this case we're saying that a taxis is a directional response to a directional stimuli. So in other words, if um, a wood lice is uh, wanting to move out of the light and into the dark, then it is moving its whole body away from the light. It's a directional response for the whole body from a directional stimuli. Okay, so from that then, let's have a look at what is a tropism. So a tropism is also a directional response to a directional stimuli but it doesn't involve the whole organism so if we think about a plant a plant a sunflower might change its um its uh, sunflowers as the sun moves its roots might grow in a particular area towards uh, a higher amount of water in the soil but the whole plant doesn't move and that's the difference with a tropism a tropism is a growth a taxis is the movement of the whole organism but they're both in response to directional stimuli and a directional response so if we now have a look at the third thing which is a kinesis a kinesis is not in response to a directional change it's not a directional uh, response uh, what it is is a change in the speed of movement and the rate of turning so if we just think about that for a moment when might that happen imagine that i've got a petri dish and imagine that half of it is damp and the other half is dry imagine i take a wood louse and i put it here it is very very close to the damp environment so because of that, it wants to get back into it. And it knows that if it increases its rate of turning, it's gonna get back there quicker. It's gonna stay in the same area, random movements, and that's gonna help it stay very much in that area. So when it's close to the best environment for it, or indeed within the environment, it's just gonna be doing short distances before it turns. When it's out of that environment, it's going to be moving quickly because it wants to get back quickly. If there is no gradient, so for example, when the organism was here, it's very, very close to the environment that it wants. So perhaps there was a gradient and it knew to move that way slightly and it did that by doing lots of turns frequently. If it's a long way, from its environment, then what it's gonna do is it's gonna move a long distance before it turns. And by moving a long distance, it's got more chance of getting back into a 
favourable environment. So let's just recap on that again. We're saying kinesis is a change in the distance that it moves before it turns. In other words, its rate of turning. If it wants to stay in an environment, its rate of turning is going to be pretty constant. If it is a little bit out of its best environment, its favourable environment, it's going to increase its rate of turning to get back. If it's a long way from home, if it's a long way from its favourable environment, it's going to move a long distance before it turns. Its rate of turning is going to slow down. So let's just have a little think about this. How do each of those relate to each other? Well, we've got a directional stimulus. Yes, that relates to a taxis, movement of the whole organism. Directional stimulus for a tropism, yes, it's for growth. Directional stimulus for a kinesis, no. In essence, there is a little bit of it there because it knows if there's a gradient and it wants to move back into that area. But as far as your exam goes, it's a no. Directional response, yes, it will move its whole body in that way. Yes, it will grow in that direction. Directional response, no, with kinesis, it's just by chance. It just knows, whoa, I'm a long way from home. I'm gonna go a long distance and turn. Or I'm close to home. I'm gonna go a short distance and turn. Whole organism, yes. Tropism, no, because it's the growth. Kinesis, yes, it's the whole organism that's moving. Growth, no, it's only tropisms that are involved in growing when we're describing their response does not involve direction well it does it does and this one doesn't involve direction changing the rate of turning no that only belongs to kinesis increases the chance of survival yes 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 that is the whole point of having three different methods of responding to changes in the internal and the external environment Let's just have a quick look at what kind of question you could be asked. In this question, we're imagining that a biologist had cultured worms at three different temperatures. Over a couple of generations, he had cultured them at 17 degrees, 20 degrees and 23 degrees. Then what he did was he got a slide and on this slide he made a temperature gradient going from 17 to 23 degrees on each of the three slides. He then placed worms from each of the three temperatures that he had cultivated the worms on, on X. He left them for an hour, and when he went back, what he found was that each of the worms were in a different position. And the question asks, how does this demonstrate taxis? In other words, why is it not kinesis, and why is it not tropism? Well, remember, taxis is a directional response to a directional stimuli that increases survival. So, in this case, the whole organism has moved. The whole organism has stayed there because it wanted 20 degrees. And here the whole organism has moved. So we know we're talking about taxis. It's moved to a favorable environment. Why is it favorable for it? Because that is the temperature it was cultured in. That is the temperature its enzymes work best at. That's the temperature that it finds more favorable because it's used to it. So that is how we would answer that question. Okay, let's have a look at this question. In this question, a scientist has done uh, an experiment on some winged termites. Now, normally termites don't have wings, but occasionally when the conditions are right, maybe once or twice a year, they sprout wings and they fly off. And the reason why they're flying off is to colonize new areas. So sometimes they do have wings. But in our experiment, uh, we've got three sets. We've got a group C set, which were normal. They had their antenna and they had their wings and eyes and everything intact. Um, so they are our control group. Group A had their eyes covered up and group B had their antennae removed and we were looking at how they behaved. So what he did was he put them on a sloping board that was at 60 degrees. 
Now, of course, when termites want to move to colonise new areas, they break out of their colony, which is normally buried deep in the soil. So they're going to be moving towards the light. So the first question we can ask is, from group B, what kind of behaviour is shown? Well, it's taxis. It's taxis because the whole organism has moved to a favourable environment. It's favourable because the light is shining from this direction and that's where it thinks it's going to go to get new space to colonise a new area. If we look at group A, we know that it's still taxis because it's moving its whole body. It's, the whole organism is moving. But in response to what? Well, it can't be light because its eyes are covered up and therefore it must be gravity uh, because it's still got its antennae and it knows that to move up and or to move to light is important but it can't respond to the light because its eyes are covered up. So in terms of um, working out what's happening with A, it's responding to gravity. In other words, it's negative gravitotropism. It's moving away from gravity. Its antennae must be involved because its eyes are covered up and um, it's not responding to light in any way. With C, we can tell that C is responding, because it's a control group, it's got its eyes and it's got its antennae, it's responding to both light and it's responding to gravity. Okay, this question looks at kinesis. How hard can it be? If you're in a maze, you're forced to turn right as you go down that right hand corridor, you then can go left or you can go right. Which choice do you take? And it's looking at that with wood lice. So let's have a look at the graph. We've got the percentage of wood lice turning in the opposite direction to the forced turn. So if in a maze you're forced to turn left and then you have the choice, will you turn right or will you turn left? And then what we've got is the distance between each of those choices. So you're forced to turn right and you go six centimetres, will you go left or right? Or if you're a woodlouse and you're forced to go right and then you go 10 centimetres before you get the choice of left or right, is there a difference in the choice that the woodlice make? Okay, so we've got that one sorted. Well, let's have a little look. So at the beginning, after a forced turn in whichever direction, after six centimetres, nearly 100% of the lice turned the opposite direction. Okay, so that means that after a short distance, when you get left or right, you're gonna go in the opposite direction. However, what we can see is as the distance moves on from that fourth turn to the point where you get the choice, then it becomes more or less 50-50. Describe the response of wood lice to increased distance between turns. As the distance increase, less of the wood lice turn in the opposite direction. And that particularly is the case between 9 and 10 centimetres, okay, because there's a big drop off there. The next part of the question says, can you conclude that wood lice show turn alternation between behaviour when the distance between the first turn and the second turn was 10 centimetres? Explain your answer. After 10 centimetres, after a forced turn, 50% will turn left, 50% will turn right. It's asking, can we conclude that they show turn alternation? Well, we can't because if it's 50-50, 50% would be going left, 50% would be going right, and that is only what we would expect given 100 would lice, half would turn left, half would turn right. So we cannot say that there is a turn alternation behaviour in the wood lice.